Hi everybody, hope you're well. Today I will read from a book titled Skizzy Co. Notes and Considerations on Tokyo's Skizzy Market by Kei Sujiyama. It has been several years since the fish market disappeared from Skizzy. As the days go by, we recall the scenery of the old market even more vividly. 2023 marks the 100th anniversary of the destruction of the Nihonbashi fish market, which had been in existence since the Edo period, by fire after the Great Kanto earthquake of 1923. The market was relocated to Skizi, formerly the site of the Edo Shugonate's Worship Training Center as the Tokyo City Central Wholesale Market Skizi Market, and it opened as the world's largest market for fish and seafood and functioned as Tokyo's Kitchen in both name and reality for more than 80 years. The market has now been relocated to Toyosu, on the east side of Tokyo Bay, about 4 kilometers from Skizi, and is officially named the Tokyo Metropolitan Central Wholesale Market, Toyosu Market. In my case, the Skizi Market is a place where I go for lunch when I visit Ginza or Shinbashi, not only for sushi, but also for all kinds of Japanese, Western and Chinese dishes, and there are also shops that sell kitchen knives and other tools. It is also the kind of place I visit toward the end of the year to prepare for the new year at home by buying things such as kombu, crab and salmon. It felt like a place where real artisans were coming and going amid the chaos, and where first-time visitors could sneak in only at lunchtime, after the business of the market had concluded. The Skizzy market was generally divided into the outer market and the inner market. The outer market, which was a place that outsiders who were not involved in the market could visit casually, is still opening and changed in Skizia as of 2023. The market outsiders could penetrate only while feeling small was the inner market, a more singular place, and it is the fish market within the inner market that is the main focus of this book. The Skizzy market has also handled substantial amounts of fruit and vegetable ever since its opening. The market attracted large numbers of tourists from abroad and the exotic mood and the tense atmosphere made it difficult for average Japanese to approach the place. But once we came under its spell, we would begin to feel as if it were a second home. Even if they have no direct relationship with the market, there are probably many people who have their own inner skizzy and cherish their memories of the area's precious possessions. The skizzy market is situated close to Tokyo's central business area, and in particular it is within easy walking distance of Ginza, an area with a long cultural history. One of the market's distinguishing characteristics is the visits by the large number of people involved in publishing and apparel industries, as well as employees of large corporations and cultural figures to the eating and drinking area within the market. The Skizzy market functions not only as a fish market, but also as a town consisting of many different facilities such as offices of the Tokyo Metropolitan Government, offices of wholesalers, a huge cold storage building, a seawater filtration facility, restaurants, a clinic, a library, a post office, a bank, a police box and a shrine, all of which surround the unique functions of the market. At the time of its completion in 1935, it was a rational and functional modernist building with state-of-the-art facilities reminiscent of the Bauhaus style. Archival materials show that a specialized team visited the leading markets in Europe at the time and executed detailed investigations and analysis in order to make the design plans for Skizzy. Judging from the construction documents available from the time, we find it was a modern building designed with reference to overseas central wholesale markets, but incorporating Japanese elements, 
while over the course of more than 80 years until the Toyosu relocation, it was optimized in a half-wild, organic manner over three to four generations. Family-owned businesses were basically the norm. To make it a more comfortable, more equal, every few years the shop locations were shuffled to minimize inequalities in their treatment and safer space for doing business. I presume that it constituted the final form of a complete town, without further significant changes, optimized as if it were in transition in the natural world. As a result, the modern building has not aged while maintaining its modern design, but, on the contrary, it has aged with a distinctive emotional quality that remains imbued with the spirit of the traditional Edo Ko fish market. Such a transformation is the very essence of a town that greets both Japanese and foreign visitors alike with a sense of nostalgia. Ask for the book at your local bookstore. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video. Bye!